What's going on guys? It is your boy from the land down under here, Jetman and I'm here bringing you a brand new uh, Power Ranking video for the, for the LDL Season 7, Week 3. And I'm lucky enough to be joined by the Megas of, of all mats, Mega Matt. <laughs> What's up everybody, Mega Matt here. Uh, and we're here to bring you this week's Power Rankings. Yes. Uh, should be a good one. And it's on time for once, yay! <laughs> Okay, so uh, in this, I will tune to the standings. We should, uh, Arthur beat Alejandro, Brandon beat Steven, Chris beat DJ, Matt beat myself, Mark beat Carlos, Jordan beat Trigg, uh, Shea beat Ramwood, and then you had Brennan beat Anthony. Uh, and like, as you can see, from the results, no one is undefeated or no, or no not had a win. So... The league is really close at the moment, and I'm excited to see what's going to happen in in my stuff coming weeks. So, and now we get sure. on to our rankings from nine to sixteen. If you want to start with number sixteen, DJ for us. All right. Um. So yeah, uh, DJ played Chris this week. Um, very exciting battle for one side. Um, a lot of switching. I think it was at least thirty turns. But um, yeah. just the whole battle felt like DJ was behind, trying to play catch up, and he just couldn't get anything going. Um, mm. I feel like maybe with a bit better prep, um, but but Chris prepped really well and played pretty well, and uh, it's just unfortunate that um, DJ lost uh, in the 6-0 fashion. He, he could have definitely done a bit better, and that's why I have him at the bottom of the list here. Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, and I'm the same. Over to number 15, oh, we actually have Trig, and, and Trig has gone down quite a few, and that's because of, uh, he goes Jordan, and let me have a look at Jordan's team really quickly to try and remember what happened in the battle, but, uh, but yeah, a bit, a bit, uh, a bit, Jordan played the guy jump really well, and there was something that Trig could do for it, or when the, oh, when the side guard went, uh, went down early, uh, uh, and there was nothing that was like stopping the uh, the guy jump from like anything in that. Uh, he, he did try to get off his C splash Kingdra, but at that third in the end, due to guy jump being, I think guy jump was scarf, yeah. Pretty sure. Um, was it scarf? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah, scarf. Was... Yeah, yeah. So I'm not exactly sure. Uh, one thing I noticed, if I can, if I can pop in here, uh, he brought the exact same team. Uh, Mons wise as he did against yeah. me, um, mm. which uh, a lot of the sets I noticed were the same. Probably Mega Manectric, very similar. Yeah. Um, Pelipper, uh, Fortress, Kingdra, Type Null, even. Mm. Um, very similar, at least spreads. Um, it's just, uh, it's very difficult yes. to succeed if you aren't able to adjust to each opponent. Yeah. And uh, I feel like if, if Tree gets that down, like he. He prepped really well for me in week one, um, and if he can get that down um, in the future, I think he has a lot yeah. of potential. Yeah. Uh, on the other side of Trig, uh, uh, Trig can battle. It's just that his prep let him down in a sense. But uh, yeah. that's all good. And the only way is to move up and get better, basically. So yeah, if you want to go on to Brennan now. Yeah. So uh, Brennan played Anthony this week. Um, Battle went right down to the wire. I think they both played pretty well, but there were a whole bunch of instances in the battle where I feel like each of them could have taken better control. Um, I don't think Brennan played bad, uh, but I also think Anthony played the first half of the match, or even two thirds of the match, really well. Um, mm -hmm. And I think he had um, the majority of momentum for for most of the game. Um, Brennan came out with the win. Um, I think he uh, he just he got behind early, but he figured out a way to win, yeah. um, which I think like it wasn't the prettiest win, but he won. He he mm. he's a veteran. He knows how to play. He his he knows yeah. his, his calcs. He knows his speeds, and he used that to his advantage. And I, that's why I moved him up to yeah. from last week. Yeah. And from his choke last week, he kind of needed to sort of like a, a redeem himself because I mean five one up and then losing. Uh, Brennan this week, uh, he was just out for sort of vengeance, and he, and he like really needed that win. So, 
Hey, what I'm Brennan. Be uh, I've been number 13. A week of Alejandro, beard of all beards, and and Alejandro, I was unfortunate to actually go up against uh, Arthur, who is a massive veteran, a top player, but ever uh, ever uh, Arthur just outplayed him from the start basically. Uh, and that and that Kieran Bay sweep was it was just amazing, and I thought as though Alejandro, I didn't prep enough. For the Kieran B, uh, all he had was it was a heat train over the North Power, <laughs> Scarf Kieran Black, wrecks his whole team basically. So there's not that much that Bid could do other than the fact that uh, he didn't have enough counters for the Kieran basically. And I believe um, uh, watching that battle and talking to them, he ran a more bulky assault vest variant of Kieran. Yeah. Which really actually um, Took worked it. out better for him in the long run yeah. because um, his fast Pokemon like uh, uh, Tornado Theory and, and and other mm. things that can hit, um, you on. know, and do big damage to yeah. to the the Kyurem, um weren't able to KO it, and so in turn mm. it got KO'd back. Um, I know Alejandro. Um, Really regretted not getting rocks up early. I think that's a huge priority, especially when there's Kyurem in the back. Yes. Every time that thing switches in a quarter of its health, like that's Big huge. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's, um, and I know uh, I know I can speak a bit from doing mocks with Arthur. Um, he brought the defog a few times in the mocks, but I I don't recall if he even had it uh, in the actual battle. So if the rocks went up, they most likely would have stayed, which would have been huge for him. Um, definitely. And now on to me. How bad did I play? Right, so, so um, I had a uh, first-hand view of of Jesse's battle this week. Uh, I was on the other side. Um, obviously, um, you did not win. Uh, there was a little bit of of RNG involved. Um, if you had managed to pull it off with the trick room and the 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 belly drum salic berry that would have been unreal yeah but uh i just think like you sacked the um the the reggie rock off pretty early like yeah. i just remember thinking throughout the battle like i'm in a good position i'm not scrambling like i feel really good about this yeah. and so i never really like like was worried and i think that's the only like downside is like um there wasn't quite that much pressure uh, mm -hmm. on my team um and i feel like yeah if you had maybe brought a couple of different things or 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 tried to get some some early initiative or momentum uh, it could have gone completely differently um okay. but it that being said it was still a close battle like if i had not had um earthquake on tan growth or um a scar fictini in the back i may have still lost yeah, so it's it's still solid prep. Um, just it was definitely it was a few inches more. You're you're all, like yeah. it was I was, it was close, very close. Yes. Uh, and uh, and for your number eleven, who was that? Oh, so, okay. I I had Stephen in at number eleven. The the rust of the rockets. Um, uh, Stephen's in a bit of a funk. He's he's been kind of clear about that himself. He. He definitely has the ability to win and the ability to prepare for his opponents. Um, but I think he's just kind of discouraged. Uh, he might be getting a little tilted. I know he had to prepare for the Zygarde 50% this past week. Um, and uh, a team that's really pretty well balanced around it. So uh, he um, he got behind early that match and uh, there wasn't much chance of coming back. So that's why I moved him down to this spot. Definitely. Uh... And it, and in my number eleven, I actually have Jordan, uh, and and Jordan moved up. It's just the fact that uh, he's a guy who jumped really well. Uh, he made like every play he needed to to win, and he had the momentum from the start. And there was nothing that you could sort of do about it. Basically, uh, uh, Jordan Speak killed the game, played perfectly, and there was nothing more that you can ask for a player other 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 just like. Loves his gimmicks, basically. And in number 10, we have Shay. Uh, 
uh, and and Chase this week actually actually beat out uh, Squid. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a pretty huge battle. It um, was. It was. It was. And. And, and and there actually were some hacks in this battle in a sense because uh, talking to Squid and there was a crit on his uh, on his uh, on his assault vessel Lorantis and if he didn't crit and the thunderous he would have lived and was the thunderous and all that so if not for hacks it would have been a lot closer uh, but for Shay for Shay had the luck and he was able to sort of capitalize on it use it uh, uh, use it to his advantage. And just take down all of the massive threats or are on Squid's team and then just clean up in the end. Oh it was a lot of so uh, so show mm-hmm. show mate well played. Definitely. I thought he prepped really, really well for that match. Hmm. He he led well, he had the megalophony which initially threatened uh threatened Laurentis right out. Um hmm. he had the well, it was Scarf Magnazone, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it was Scarf Magnazone, which Seriously, put in a lot of work, uh, a lot of work against Randwood's team. He had the switch in. Hippowdon so was a switch in for Tracheon. Tracheon mm-hmm. came in. Hippowdon was a switch in. He, it, it'll take a close combat. It'll take a, a Stone Edge even better. Um, and then at the end, it was uh, Scarf Latias, right? Was it was it Scarf Latias? I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, which just came in and 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 you know tore holes through the the what was left, which. Um, and and credit to him for like, I think his prep was the the best part of this week. He he played around Squid's team well, but um, he needed to play well and prep well, and I I, I think he did that. Hmm, and in number nine for you. So I put Jordan at number nine. Um, he uh, got his first win this week, which was uh, huge for him. He was kind of on a bit of a skid. Um, trying to just kind of find out his identity on this team. I really thought um, the way he managed the game was 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 very good. He had the Doug Trio, which he got in. He um, he sacked the Deli Bird so he could trap um, what was it? So he could trap something in with the Doug Trio, get off what he needed to get off, and mm. uh, and take it out. Um, and then from there, he was at a big advantage because of that. Uh, he he could take the momentum in, and just really kind of carry it throughout. And yeah, I think he he definitely did that. He did. Uh, and in number nine for me, uh, uh, I have Stephen, and that, and I said before, Stephen isn't a funk. I would also just have to face uh, like the pressure of Zygarde fifty, and also and also Brandon. Brandon is on an absolute rampage at the moment. Like after uh, Brandon. Uh, after that week one loss, uh, he is out for blood basically, and oh, Brandon just played really well, and there was, and there was, a, and there was like nothing much other than just, other just like sort of Stephen could do, other than maybe run like a sand rush extra drill, and with a Zygarde, oh, I remember Brandon's team, eh, I really don't want to bring two mons, and like, and like, out of like week to ground, so mm-hmm. and with that thousand arrows, uh, Jill Stevens, Mons, I did a levitate, but with that, with that sort of non immunity to, to flying, basically, uh, Brandon was able to run through his team, and there was and there's not so much that Steven could uh, could do about it, basically. So it is what it is, and yep. bad luck. Uh, and now we move on to our to our to our top eight, and then number eight, oh, we have Chris, and I'll go ahead and take this one. Go for it, Chris. Uh, Chris beat DJ, and I will say that Chris manhandled manhandled him the whole time, basically. Uh, uh, Chris had a magnet rise Klefki. That was a, that was a, a, a amazing tech. He also had uh, there was and there was there was another tech in his battle that he had. I forgot. Oh, what was I it? I I'll remember it. Um, uh, but yeah, but uh, use the sun, the the Lilligant, uh, Yeah, for the for the powerful uh, yeah. He used that he had a bulky Landorus, I'm pretty sure too. Yes, he did too. Yeah, and he's able to use that Landorus. So amazing defensive switch in. Yeah, definitely. And he's able to use it. I just pivot it basically, and for that, I just that sort of 
intimidate is because DJ's team, uh, DJ's team is like, is like very sort of offensive, basically, and 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 just be able to use Landorus and just sort of cripple his team, and be able to force DJ to swap out yeah. and and check him on the back foot and just keep up that oh and, and just keep off and just keep up that oh, offensive pressure. That was just amazing with Chris. And mate, well played. Yeah. And I'm keen to see what you can do to Matt in week four. <laughs> I'm keen to see it too. Uh, so that brings us to Mark in at number seven. Yep. Um, Mark played Carlos this week. Um, a relatively short battle compared to a lot of the other ones. Um, uh, they both went out guns a blazing. Um, unfortunately, there were a couple of really crucial crits. Um, uh, there's a Bandit Ente uh, Extreme Speed crit on Gastrodon, which kind of just put Gastrodon uh, in a place range. where it couldn't really take many hits. Uh, yeah, and so it was kind of crippled for the rest of the game. And then later on, uh, the Halucha setup with the, the Grassy Seed was was really solid prep um, on Mark's part. I'll give it to him. Um, uh, but he told me himself the, the Poison Jab wasn't going to kill Sylveon. Um, it was at about, at least 75%. I think, and it was doing max 70 unless he had absolutely no investment in HP or defense, um, which it looked like he did from the from the first hit, but um, but it crit and hyper voice surely would have taken him out. Um, but yeah, so unfortunate. Um, I still think they both played well, prepped well. If that did. Uh, if the hacks hadn't have, it came into play so much, I th I would be really interested to see how that battle went. Um, would have been a much closer really game, definitely. Yeah. Um, and I think Mark deserves his his bump up. He took advantage of of what he needed to and and capitalized, and he came on top. Yeah. And if you and like as you've seen from this week, uh, we've had uh, Carlos, uh, Carlos, and also Squid lose, and also Anthony lose, uh, and all those three uh, were just undefeated, up, up putting a pressure. And that is why the Anthony has also dropped down this week. It's out of the number six spot. And Anthony played really well, in my opinion. If everybody's plays in like the second half of the game let him down. He just sort of I let Brennan. It just sort of it just like create that pressure, which then forced Anthony onto the back foot, and then just let Brennan wreak havoc and be able to play his game. And that's what sort of led Anthony to lose in a sense. I know that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I do know that Anthony, I was trying to sort of make his team and be able to have it where, where he wants it to be, but unfortunately, it is what it is, not too much can, uh, not too much can sort of happen from that, and Anthony played well, but there was nothing he could do, it was his second half, it was like, it was just Brennan making that pressure and being able to force Anthony onto the back foot, yep. causing him to lose. I'm uh I'm curious to know what that um what was it the Ladio set was um because there were a few situations where it was in against something uh that it could have killed with say a, a psychic type move or a uh I think it was the Nido King or hmm. or it, it something swapped in and and he went for the the safe plays uh like roost and things um but uh, I'm curious if he had if he had the psychic type stab if he had the HP fire for Scizor, because later on he went for the Draco meteor, which which leads me to believe he didn't. He, uh, I'm just wondering like he didn't. Yeah, because uh, if, if maybe yeah. he had the like a few different moves, yeah, uh, the battle could have changed completely. Like it's it was that close. Yeah, uh, either Defog, Draco meteor, Fire Shock, and then Roost. What would the soul do? Fire Shock. Hmm. Oh yeah, because that powers up what dragon and and psychic, psychic right? Yeah, uh, it powers up like one point two, I think. Oh, or some the Draco did so much. Yeah, makes sense. So, uh, all right. And in number five, uh, I have Brandon, and uh, and and Brandon beat Steven. Uh, yeah, just <laughs> Brandon played really well. He was able to use that Zygarde. It, it's his advantage, and not that Steven had like nothing to sort of count it basically. So uh Brandon, Brandon played well. He actually played a his own Zygarde and being able to use it perfectly and being able to sort of get it in at like the optimal 
at like the optimal point to be able to sort of get in, set up, and just sort of wreak havoc when he wanted, basically. Yeah. Can you do your squid? Yeah, um, so uh, Squid played a good game this week. Um, he had he had solid prep, he had answers. Um, that Lorantis set was very, very creative, and I, I'll give him mad props for that. Um, it is unfortunate how the game went. Um, without those crits, yeah, it's a very close game. Um, he easily could have pulled it out. Squid's a good battler, but um, unfortunately he was on the wrong end and dropped this decision, so... Um, yeah, so he's moving down a bit, but look out next week. He's definitely uh, raring to uh, make up for that one and and, he is. and back up. Uh, definitely. Uh, and uh, and number four, you had Brandon. Yeah, so I think I think Brandon played really well. Um, his prep was really solid. He had a, a balanced team. Like almost every modern his team had a kill this week. Uh, I think the Brailium, he played really well with it. Um, he got a bit lucky with the five hit bullet seed. Um, yes. uh, without that, um, I'm not sure if it would have really changed because say he gets a two hit and a three hit, it was the same. Um, but yeah, the Arcanine, the Primarine, and the Rhydon's a really solid defensive core. Um, and yeah, he, he, he did what he needed to do to win with what he had. And, uh, mm. and for that, I, put him at number four because he 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 proved that he is a threat and yeah. uh can't really sleep on him definitely and at number four uh i actually have squid and it's because it it was a hex and you can't really fault someone if just sitting there and being hexed and then being able to have nothing to sort of do about it uh, because uh, because uh, because uh, uh with, with pokemon one single move, it can like change the whole game big time. And with those two sort of crits on Squid, and there was not, and there was not much he could do about it. And what he had to do, he did, and he, and he tried his best to make most of the situation, and to be able to come back and all that. But a Shade just had the luck, and Shade just sort of, but did what he needed to do, and just sort of had Squid on the back foot, and was able to take out the win. So, uh, so for that for me, Squid is above Brandon, and because of the hacks. And, I, and, I, and also because I feel as though Squid did uh, as much as he could and be able to make it the lowest differential as possible. Yeah. If you want to talk about Carlos and, and then I'll do yourself. Yeah, so for sure. I had I had Carlos at number three. Um, very similar to Squid. I think he prepped well. He he played well. Just the, the odds were not in his favor. Um, and he... I didn't pick up the win. It's it's Pokemon. It happens. I know he'll bounce back. He's he's a really good battler. So and he's against he's, me. So he's down to. So yeah. Yeah. No, but, uh, there's not uh, uh, there's not much that Carlos could do. Uh, but I do know that best of me this week, Carlos will be looking to get a win back and be able to come back with vengeance and 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 he's possibly looking for a six zero. And I will guarantee yeah, you, see, you see that. You see that Darmanitan? Yes. See that Darmanitan? You're going to catch those hands, man. Right. Except you have Darmanitan. I'm bringing the Darmanitan. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Anyway. I'm bringing it. Yeah. Uh, at your number two. Uh, I have I, I have someone that I don't like, basically. <sighs> and this week, uh, Matt just... I don't know how you let me get that high. <sighs> <sighs> Being in the losing end, and there's... Uh, there is, uh, there is a lot of salt and a lot of respect for Matt basically because I feel as though that I prepped really well and I had the tech set out and, and thought out, but Matt just did everything. It just not let me set up and be able to get the momentum that I needed for the win. And for that, Matt is up uh, in, in the number two spot because uh, because uh, because Matt just played well to the point where uh, where really uh, he never really set up any sort of offensive pressure but he never let me do anything in what I wanted to do basically like uh, like Matt played really well and he also used the Tango out of the best of his ability although there was some oh, wow. luck with the Tango where I did where I did block the Tango in and I was going to get set up and then and then be able to set up my, de my demon hand and sweep but 
a bit underwear. Yes. Uh, with that, Matt played well. It, it did what he needed to do. And there's a reason why that he is at number one. Oh, number two, sorry, number two. Arthur is at number one. You want to talk about that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you for the, the kind words. I know it's tough. Um, it is. <laughs> when you lose to somebody. So I, I, I appreciate how much you, you, you put in there. Um, uh, Arthur's here at number one. Um, I just, I watched Arthur's battle. I prepped, well, I, I helped him mock. I saw the work that he put into to prepping for multiple different options. He had a few different modes of teams. The one he brought um, was definitely one of the, the better options. He he played it really well too. Um, he was in control the majority of the match and uh, and he pulled out the win. He he definitely deserves it and uh, I'd be I'd be worried if you have to play him in the next few weeks. Definitely. I have him week nine, so Yeah, but a oh, bit oh, with that being said guys, uh I actually Matt this week I choose I choose the LDL battle of the week and it is actually going to Chris F that six O against DJ and Matt tell us your reasons why. All right, yeah. So there's a lot of close battles this week, but um, I just felt from watching those battles that um, they didn't necessarily have to be as close. Like there's a there's a few. Um, I don't know, questionable plays, questionable prep, I don't know. Um, and pivotal that, moments, uh, basically. Yeah, and, 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 and really big, uh, you know, things that were missing. And I think Chris had everything this week. Um, uh, unfortunate to DJ that, that he was on the receiving end of it. But mm. um, this was a bit of a masterclass from Chris. He had checks for everything. He had walls for everything. He, ha he knew how to get his threats in. And really threaten uh, DJ's Pokemon out, and he never let up. He played honestly. I think the, the best game he could have played, and yes, and, uh, and that is the best game that I've ever seen Chris play in his life. Like Chris yeah, played, he, got, he, he earned that six zero, and he did for that. You know, normally a sweep, um, a, a, like a, a lopsided victory, isn't entertaining or a, a great thing to watch. Mm. But I think. Um, just the fact that he he really demonstrated how well he could play uh, just mm. just goes into what makes this the best battle of this week. Definitely. Uh, and then to close it off, uh, any sort of comments, thoughts about the upcoming weeks and also this week? Yeah, I'm looking forward to. There's a there's a whole lot of spicy matches coming up. Um, week six is uh, is definitely one to look out for. Um, Mark against Brennan, Randbird against Matt. Um, Steven against Carlos um, a lot of new guys against each other and old guys against each other Jesse and Alejandro um, I'm really looking forward to to a lot of those matchups mm. um, uh, yeah uh, good luck week four young. The, the, yeah. uh, the season is young um, anybody can still win even if you've only won one match out of three um, yes. you Anyone can beat anyone, uh, as as is shown in the three matches so far. Yes. Um, and I would encourage you all to uh, have faith in yourself. Uh, ask for help if you if you need it for for prep for for advice. I know some people have been, and uh, it's always exciting to see. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens because uh, it's shaping up to be one of the best seasons yet. It is. And with that being said, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been your boy from Land Down Under, Jetman Ninety Nine. Signing off, and and I wish you all the best of luck in the upcoming weeks, and please let me win. Peace.